A lot of people. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, we are here with a special guest today. This is Donnie, please introduce yourself. Hey there, my name is Donnie Wallagroski. I'm a senior marketing manager for consumer processors here at AMD. Awesome, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I just have a couple questions and we'll have a booth tour in this as well so we can see what AMD is showcasing at CES today. So Donnie, I'd just really love to know, how did you get started at AMD? And what did your, uh, I guess, <laughs> career roadmap look like? People probably shouldn't do what I did. <laughs> I was so bored at a job I had, so I started trolling like all the time. I was on Tom's Hardware, and they had a, a board. They were like, hey, we want some feedback. And I, I complained about all these articles I wanted to see they weren't doing. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you make the articles, and we'll, we'll post them. And I was like, OK. And I called some manufacturers for hardware to test, and they were like, oh, yeah, Tom's Hardware. Sure, they shoved it at me. I made a lot of good contacts in the industry. Mm -hmm. I reached out to a bunch of people, and AMD responded. And they were like, yeah, we can use a, a marketing manager for CPUs as knowledgeable. So. Mm -hmm. Here I am. So I don't know if that's repeatable by anyone, but that's my story. Mm -hmm. And Let's it seems like you found your calling, right? Man, it makes such a difference. And you know this, I'm sure, because mm -hmm. you're not doing this because you don't care about mm -hmm. technology. Like yeah, yeah. waking up in the morning so much better getting out of bed and going to work when you really care about what you're doing, when mm -hmm. it excites you, you know? So yeah, absolutely. That's the one thing everybody can apply. Just do what you love. What do you think has been the key factor behind AMD's success? And where do you see the industry evolving in the next few years? Oh, wow. that's a that's a big question, man. Yeah, 9 a.m. <laughs> um, when I started, we were in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. Like we had the FX processor and Radeon was okay, mm -hmm. but uh, didn't really have a lot of market share. We're kind of capped down to a, to a minimum. Mm -hmm. We knew Ryzen was special. We knew Ryzen was coming. So we really, I mean, everybody killed themselves to make it to the launch. So sales and marketing and the engineers and you know, we, we had to find a way to sell what we had for a while. Mm -hmm. Since Ryzen, obviously it's been meteoric. I mean. Mm -hmm. It's such a great uh, intellectual property. It's just such a great architecture. Mm -hmm. Our engineers are firing all cylinders, refreshing it constantly. I mean, you know, when we launched Threadripper, it was this massive deal and nobody had ever seen 16 cores in a, in a desktop and it yeah, was, yeah. blew everybody's mind. And now I think that's gonna continue, right? We're gonna get more power in the hands of the consumer. I mean, people never stop being hungry for more performance. Mm -hmm. and there's some questions as to, you know, which ecosystems will fit where now that, you know, they're. Arm's a big player in Apple, and, and mm -hmm. so we're all kind of fitting in where we make sense, but uh, uh, we love that niche and we're mm -hmm. happy to keep developing for them. Processors are increasingly being designed to handle AI applications. What are some practical applications for uh, Ryzen AI and AI Pro chips? There's some cool gamer use cases that are starting to emerge right there. You can use the NPU while you're playing, mm -hmm. and, and it will intelligently pick the clips where something happens in your game. Mm -hmm. So if you get a headshot or yeah, if just yeah. there's a lot of movement and it sees, hey, this is the kind of clip that, that that's on YouTube or mm -hmm. on Twitch or whatever. Copilot Plus with, with Windows is a big deal. Um, as Microsoft rolls that out, we get more functionality there. It just truly impacts your day. I mean, me on a day-to-day -day basis, using uh, large language models to mm -hmm. help me do stuff is has become a big part of my workflow. With enthusiasts looking for customizability when it comes to their PCs, how does AMD incorporate overclocking? One of the things we did with Ryzen when we launched it was we said, hey, everything on desktop is going to be pretty much unlocked. Yeah. Like, unless there's reason not to. You know, it's funny, when we started, when I started here, mm -hmm. it was a core group of, of true, like, real enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. Like, guys who gamed and, and overclocked and did stuff like that. And a lot of those guys are still here in the background. And we care about this stuff. That's why mm -hmm. we're the only one to guarantee socket longevity. Mm -hmm. Nobody else does that. Nobody else yeah, says, hey, yeah. we guarantee we're going to have a socket for three, four generations, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a big part of our who we are mm -hmm. and and we love it. Yeah. And it's going to keep going. That's awesome. And you guys recently released the new Ryzen 9000 series. I just had a quick hypothetical question. Okay. Let's just say uh, I'm watching this video as a marketing manager and uh, I'm interested in purchasing a new laptop and I'm planning to keep for many years to come. I don't know if I need an NPU because I, I don't know uh, AI is so new. Mm -hmm. What chip would you recommend of the stack? I mean, you're asking how long is a piece of string? If you know you're just a content creator and hardcore gamer mm -hmm. and you know that your AI is, well, is graphics based? Because some people only use graphics for AI if they yeah, have high-end yeah. graphics. Then the new, um, the new Fire Range chips we announced, the 99, 55 HX 3D, mm -hmm. you get all the goodness of, of you know, that 3D V cache from the, the same as the 9000 X3D mm -hmm. on a laptop chip that nothing will be able to touch from a gaming content 
perspective, nothing be able to touch from a content creator perspective. Like, like I've been using an Asus G13 for a while mm -hmm. because I like something sort as light as I can get yeah, that yeah. does the job in the office and then I can game on, mm -hmm. and it does a great job. But now that functionality you can get in a thinner, lighter laptop form factor. Yeah, with crazy built-in graphics with insane amounts of memory you can mm -hmm. assign directly to the graphics card. You can run. AI workloads faster than a desktop 4090 in some mm. cases, using way less power. Like that's really exciting for me. I think content creators, people who work, do serious work on the go, I think that's gonna be, for them, the most exciting thing. So there's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's this massive list of products. RDNA 4, obviously mm -hmm. gamers gonna be interested in that. It really is, what do you want? What mm -hmm. do you want? We got it. That pretty much answered it. And with Ryzen 9000, RDNA 4, Ryzen AI chips, we have some really exciting announcements recently, but what does AMD's roadmap look like in the next few years? And what are some emerging technologies you see in future products? Sure, I, I think I can make some generalizations outside of, uh, you know, we, we have public roadmaps, but I personally believe that AI is gonna become so important that it's gonna be in everything. So mm -hmm. we're probably gonna see MPUs in more platforms, more, mm -hmm. you know, more form factors, probably be more important in desktop as the years go by. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be table stakes just like you know, multi-core is, mm -hmm. right? There was a time when multi-core was not was a new thing and fancy and it took quite a few years. I actually think MPUs are gonna accelerate faster than that. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're gonna start to see more killer apps on AI mm -hmm. in the next few years. Making these pieces fit together is a lot of engineering work, a lot of development work, a lot of experiential work. What, mm -hmm. what do we need? We don't even know really what we need. And what, what I'm most excited for is gaming, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you take a stick out of a barrel, the whole town doesn't attack you. Mm -hmm. You know, they say, hey, what are you doing with that? Put it back and you put it back and they're like, okay, that's cool. Like that kind of experience is what I'm looking for in my future games. Mm -hmm. And I think we're right on track for that. Like mm -hmm. definitely going full steam ahead there. So mm -hmm. let's end on a good note. What is uh, your favorite part about working at AMD and what, what excites you? Oh man. I think, I think just being part of a group of people who look forward and mm -hmm. really, I mean, we have to guess what, what's important next. Mm -hmm. Years ahead of time, our engineers have to do that and we get to feed back into them and say, hey, we think this is becoming more important and it's very gratifying to be mm -hmm. here, now that I've been here a few years, to be like, this is stuff we worked on for two, you know, two, three, four, five years. Mm -hmm and it's coming to market and people love it. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we were right, you know, we called that. That's that's really cool, and mm -hmm. AMD does a really good job of that, as, as you can tell. I think that's that's the coolest part for me. For sure, yeah. Awesome, well, I won't keep you here too much longer. Donnie, I really appreciate your time, and thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Tone. This has been fun. Thank you. Not too many stammers. <laughs>